Hello, and welcome to session six in this online course taking you through George Spencer Brown's Laws of Form. I'm Leon Conrad, and in this session, we're going to start looking at building a calculus. This is the content that Spencer Brown covers in chapter five. <clears throat> so what is a calculus? Well, Spencer Brown helpfully defines it as a system of constructions and conventions that allows calculation. But what is calculation? Well, here's what he says. It's a procedure by which, as a consequence of steps, a form is changed for another. I find that magical. So, we're going to start with algebraic calculation. What is algebra? Well, it comes from an Arabic word, means, uh, which means a reunion or a resetting of broken parts. It's putting something together, reuniting it, making it whole. So the basic building blocks of this calculus are going to be tokens of variance, uh, variable form, these are lowercase letters, tokens of constant form, these are marks, and the word constant is going to be important, we'll come back to that. The form of position, and we know that from theorem 8. The form of transposition, we know that from theorem 9, our old friend. And two rules commonly accepted as implicit in the use of the sign equals. Now, these we're going to go into in quite a lot of detail in this session. Rule one is about substitution. His wording of it is quite, uh, quite syntactically complex. So I prefer to state it like this. And I will compare my version with his so that you know that we're talking about the same thing. But I think this way is easier to understand. I start with this. If E equals F, then BBE equals BBF. Let's call BBE G, let's call BBF H. Therefore, G equals H. Here's Spencer Brownwood's wording, and here has it, here's how it compares with mine. If E equals F, and if H is an expression, constructed by substituting F for any appearance of E in G, then G equals H. Let's see how it works with numbers, because that may be simpler for people to understand. Let's say E equals 4 and F equals 2 times 2. E equals F because 4 is exactly the same value as 2 times 2. It's just expressed differently. If B equals 3, then the expression BBE is equivalent to 3 times 3 times 4, and BBF, 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, and BBE is equal to BBF because 3 times 3 times 4 is exactly the same as 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. Let's call BBE, or 3 times 3 times 4, G, and let's call BBF, or 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, H. Since BBE is equivalent to BBF in value, then G equals H. Compare it with Spencer Brown's wording, which looks like this. If E equals H, and if H is an expression constructed by substituting F for any of appearance of E in G, then G equals H. And that covers rule one, substitution. What about rule two, replacement? Well, again, let me take you through my rewording of it. And I'll compare it with Spencer Brown's wording. Where E is equal to AVC and F is equal to DVP, and AVC equals DVP, and note that both expressions have a common term, V. E equals F, stands to reason. If ABC becomes AWC, and we call AWCJ, and DVP becomes DWP, and we call DWPK, and notice that the Vs have changed to Ws, then J equals K irrespective of whether V is the same value as W or it has a different value. Now, here's my articulation. Let's compare it with Spencer Brown's. If E equals F, and if every token of a given independent variable expression V in E equals F is replaced by an expression W, 
it not being necessary for v and w to be equivalent or for w to be independent or variable, and if, as a result of this procedure, e becomes j and f becomes k, then j equals k. Here's the mathematical version of it. Let's say that avc we call e, and we assign numerical values of 8 times 2 times 3 to it. The product of those is 48. Let's take dvp to be f, and assign the values 4 times 2 times 6, the product of which is also 48, so e equals f. So avc equals dvp. Now let's replace v with w in both e and f. Whether v equals w is the same thing from the same value, or whether it's different, some other value, doesn't really matter. So awc equals dwp. We'll call awc j, we'll call dwp k, j equals k. Here's Spencer Brown's wording, here's how it compares. If e equals f, and if every token of a given independent variable expression v in E equals F is replaced by an expression W, it not being necessary for W to be equivalent to V or for W to be independent or variable, and if as a result of this procedure E becomes J and F becomes K, then J equals K. And that satisfies the demonstration that rule 2 replacement works. Now we're going to use all of these and a system of indexing he uses where C stands for consequence, I stands for an initial of the primary arithmetic, J stands for an initial of the primary algebra, algebra, R stands for rule, and T stands for theorem in our next session where we start looking at consequences. I look forward to seeing you then.